Hello and welcome to a Mech Commander Gold, I should say. Because as you probably can tell, it's got the subtitle A Desperate Measures. Desperate Measures was an expansion campaign disc thing made for Mech Commander that came later, and the combined pack containing both the original game and the expansion is called Mech Commander Gold. This is Mech Commander Gold. Desperate Measures added a few features to the game, which are real welcome additions, like a waypoint system, where you can order, you can give your individual units waypoints to follow. They added a difficulty uh, level selection, and uh, they added a much needed option to order your mech warriors to only employ energy weapons. If you are trying to get through a forested area, so you don't necessarily want to blow your very expensive uh, gauze rifle ammunition on flattening trees. So, for those where this made perfect sense, that's good and dandy. For those who have no clue what I'm on about, don't worry, we'll get there. I will go over game mechanics as we go along. Uh, make some references to different weapon systems and mechs and, and things like that. For those who could potentially be interested in a lore dump, I will happily make one, but only on request. Um, it is based on memory, and I think my memory is sufficient to uh, give a background, very rough background information about uh, the events leading up to this game. Suffice to say, all you need to know is that the, the troops, uh, the forces we are employing are called Inner Sphere and they have a certain level of technology available to them and the enemies we are fighting in this game are Clan Smoke Jaguars and they have access to Clan technology which is superior in every aspect possible. Longer ranges, more damage, way less. It's just better period which of course leaves us as a uh, somewhat unfair uh, disadvantage but uh, we'll find a way to uh, even out the odds so because uh, apparently uh, I did a test recording of this and there was some massive massive feedback from my headset to the microphone I will be muting myself and some people will probably desire that I just mute myself, period. But regardless, for the briefing. So uh, I'll catch you after the first operation briefing. Command interface initiate incoming transmission. Davian guards, our first battalion is on planet. We caught the smoke jaguar off guard, but just barely. They were able to activate the planet's orbital guns and caught the dropship York before she landed. We have lost all contact, so assume X-ray company is out of the picture. Yankee and Zulu companies, you'll pick up the slack as well as any survivors and equipment that can be used. While those guns keep us pinned down, support will be limited, so salvage is a priority. Davians, make no mistake. Despite the loss of X-ray company, our battle plan is intact. We will take this planet back. I'm downloading your mission briefings. Move to destroy the designated clan targets and we'll gain a beachhead before they can react. The town will make special equipment available as required. So, uh, that was the operations briefing. Uh, most operations, if not all, are divided into six missions. And here we can get our mission briefing. Before anything else, let's uh, quickly go through our options here. Main menu. Guess what that do? It does thing, whatever. Uh, the briefing is where we are. Purchasing, we can go in and purchase stuff. Except for the fact that we can't because we only got 5,000 resource points. Which is barely enough to buy breakfast. Mech Bay is where our current mechs are parked. With their mech warriors in them. So let us go back to this for just a second. And mechs are often uh, 
called robots for some bizarre reason, but uh, as you can probably see, they have a pilot attached to them, so they are not automated machinery. They do have the pilots in them, which are known as mech warriors, which of course is the namesake of a very popular series of 3D games. This is far more Battletech inspired than Mech War, and the difference is that Battletech is the mech combat in the tabletop system, whereas Mech Warrior is the role playing system attached to Battletech. So, um, someone smarter than me decided that Mech Warrior was a better name for game series, I suppose, or probably all other reasons as well. Um, but whatever the case, a mech is a machine built for fighting. It is also sometimes considered to be an upright tank, but that's a bit simplified. Regardless, it is a, a weapons platform uh, armored to a more or less, an ex uh, to a smaller or lesser extent even, and depending on size, weight, and whatever, it is slow, medium speed or fast, lightly armored, lightly armed, or heavily armored and heavily armed. And you can probably imagine light mechs are the fast ones with light armor and light weaponry, assault mechs are the heavy boys with all the firepower and armor to back it up. So we have access to two commando mechs and a fire starter. In this game, let's go in on the purchasing because there I can shoot better. Let's just use the commando as an example. You have access to an armor variation when available. They're not always available. It's scripted when they're available, but certain sometimes you have uh, certain versions available um, and other versions that are not available. The armor variation packs more armor, less weapons. You can see over here it's got one laser, four short range missile packs. The weapons variation has less armor. It's not going to be shown here because it is a light mech. It can only have so much armor on them. It's got two lasers, one streak short range missile pack and two short range missile packs. And then a jump jet variation, which has um, the same weapons laid out as an armor variation, but less armor. When you have less armor in a light mech, you are boned. Okay, I'll just put it out. If you find anything heavier than, yeah, I don't know, a farmer planting his potatoes or something, you're boned. Uh, light mechs don't have armor. Uh, commandos, I'd say, one of the light mechs has got a decent amount of armor, but uh, there are certain light mechs design that are not present in this game. And that's probably for the better because. You look at them in the wrong way and they will blow up. Regardless, here is the um, combat effectiveness of the unit. And for an interesting reason, a jump jet capable mechs or jump capable mechs can are considered to be having a much a higher efficiency than non jump capable mechs. I always find that a bit puzzling. Um, this rating is also affected by the pilots involved and uh, let's go back because we can hire mech warriors, we can buy components and we can buy vehicles and I will get over them when we need them. Components, we can't buy anything we could possibly want anyway so it doesn't matter. We can't hire any mech warriors on the first mission. So let's go, go back to our mech bay. You can see we have a beast. This is the beast. This is the beast, as he said. This is Hunter. And Hunter. And my favorite mech warrior. This is Link. They have um, their call signs, uh, their rank, and then they have certain skills. So let's quickly go over it. The rank. A green mech warriors can only pilot light mechs without the combat efficiency uh, being affected. In order to pilot medium mechs, you would need um, a regular mech warriors. 
in order to pilot heavy makes you need veteran make warriors and in order to pilot assault makes you would need an elite make warrior to not affect the combat uh, effectiveness of a mech if you put a green mech warrior in an assault mech you may as well not bring the mech at all the combat effectiveness is going to plummet they just cannot they don't have the necessary uh, experience to uh, comfortably control such a heavy uh, unit so their skills gunnery gunnery is their ability to hit stuff piloting is their ability isn't a mouse over no okay doesn't matter piloting is their uh, uh, ability to keep the mech upright when crossing difficult terrain or getting uh, hit by big hits or potentially losing a leg um, when a mech takes massive damage in a short succession of time um, the pilot is basically forced to in game terms in tabletop game terms make a piloting skill check to see if it retains its balance um, this skill will uh, define how likely they are to recover from uh, anything that affects the mech physically jumping the ability to operate jump jets it's basically the ability to um, <laughs> land without crashing so um, yeah and sensors is how effective they are in the use of sensors which is not so much relevant for basic sensors but as you get um, advanced uh, sensors the sensor skill can have a major impact on um, its effectiveness so quickly let's look through our weapon systems here for SIM impacts anyone who's played Battletech will know that in Battletech you have short range, short range missile pack 2's, 4's and 6's the commando um, the default commando in Battletech will have an SM4 and an SM6 and then a medium laser um, these are 4 does not add up to 10 and that could be because it's the armor variation I wish there was some sort of reference to um, what variation is closest to the default configurations from the source books but uh, whatever the case alarm packs only comes in 5s in this game and in battle site they come in the line 5, 10, 15 and 20 packs so this sort of sort of compromise I think it was to minimize the amount of data that has to be included into the game and it works perfectly fine a laser is called laser it is equivalent to a medium laser there are no small lasers small lasers or well. in, in this game there's no machine gun arrays either so all very short range weaponry is just out this is as I said equivalent to a medium laser and then of course you have large lasers and other weapon systems the streak missile pack it's just like a short range missile pack except for the fact that it will only spend ammunition when it's got a lock on it will not fire unless it guarantees to hit the target so it's uh, a mechanic that's not relevant for you as the commander but um, streak short range missile packs are more accurate but can fire less often if a lock is not or if a hit is not guaranteed and of course that has got some medium lasers as well then we come down to the fire starter a two short range missile packs and a laser and then in this game my favorite weapon the particle projector cannon it basically fires a superheated ball of plasma at a target and it is doing quite a lot of damage for what it does it also generates a lot of heat but heat is not relevant for the commander it is uh, anyone who's been playing make I will know that heat management is a vital part of doing well in a mech um, it is relevant for the pilots but it's not something you have to concern yourself with just be aware though that if you put a ton of energy weapons on a, a mech 
they will not fire the energy weapon at all times because they will I mean a shutdown mech is defenseless and these pilots are thankfully smart enough to realize that uh, shutting down is bad so um, you could potentially equip a mech with six PPCs I don't think you actually can in this game but even if you could they would not fire all six it would just be waste of space basically but the PPC has a range advantage and you will quickly find in this game that having long range engagement ability is quite vital for some of the enemies that you will be facing consistently it's just say that this game likes to throw heavy weapons at you and most heavy weapons got short ranges something to be said for the PPC and uh, it applies to the long range missiles the light order cannons and the gauze rifles is that uh, there's a concept called a minimum range without going too much into details um, PPCs has a minimum range of about 90 meters in Battletech I don't know the exact range in this game but it seems to be roughly equivalent at least my mouse it doesn't jump around too much and that is because uh, a hit within that range would cause a splice damage that could potentially damage the mech that is the reason given um, long range missile packs have a minimum range of every 180 meters and that is because the missiles need a certain distance before they arm so they just won't fire within that range and gauze rifles um, I far as I remember have a similar minimum range to long range missiles and that is an important thing to know it's not just uh, well it doesn't matter it does matter because some of the enemies you'll be facing they are packing gauze rifles even at a very early stage in the game and the way to defeat them is to rush them if you keep forcing them to be in melee range uh, you can't unfortunately melee in this game that's another aspect of Battletech that's just not possible in this game and most memory games if not all of them but um, it won't be able to the, the enemies won't be able to use their gauze rifles so um, yeah minimum range is of some importance but we've talked enough here so uh, let us go to our deployment and let us deploy our max um, that's another thing I should mention the drop weight limit even though you potentially have access to three four scoops this limitation is what uh, defines how much and what you can actually deploy we have a limit of 85 tons but our max combined will only weigh 80 so we will get a bonus for deploying less you can intentionally deploy less tonnage than is uh, available to you and you will get a resource point bonus uh, it's not something I don't necessarily would play for because the bonus is not great and if you end up risking sacrificing a lot of mechs then, or a lot of firepower even um, the bonus just doesn't make up for it on the other hand if you know the missions inside and out and know that you can get away with using just specific whatever it could be worth playing around with but uh, let us um, get into the mission about time someone Bounce the yellow, but never mind. Commencing deployment. Mech warriors prepare for combat. I have a new sensor trade. So, game interface. I will uh, just go over this now, spend a bit of time on it now, so I don't have to worry too much about it later. The circles around them, the green dots, are the mechs. The circles around them are their sensor ranges. Um, when they start moving, their sensors will be affected by the movement of the mech, so it will be shorter. Um, the options here, these are the support abilities that we don't have. Map data for the selected unit can also be used for enemy units, so you can get an idea of what kind of weaponry they are trying to employ against you. Briefing is a refresher of what you need to do, and salvage is whatever you pick up in resource containers or from blown up mechs. If there's anything left of them to salvage, it will appear here you will not gain salvage from vehicles so the command palette we can uh, zoom in on the map 
we can zoom even further in. And even further in. And no, that's it. And then we can zoom in on the game. But uh, it's an old game, it looks a bit coarse. I don't think it looks bad. It just looks a bit rough. But then we have attack from position. Hold down C when giving an order. Use short range weapons. S. Medium range weapon. M. And a long range weapon. And if you're attacking a fixed emplacement which got medium range and you've got long range weapons, you don't want to take unnecessary damage. And that is the key in these missions, is to avoid taking unnecessary damage. In that regard, the normal PPC will be used by using the long range because it is called medium range weapon, but it's closer to long range. Um, a hex in Battletech is 30 meters across. Um, a large laser will fire 15, which is considered medium range, and a PPC will fire 18, whereas a long range missile pack will fire 21. So it's slam bang in the middle between medium and long range. Enough about that. Drag selection. Nothing special in that. A lot of RCSs have been out by then. Um, Mech, um, come on, Conga was about four years old when this game came out. So, anyway, let's get to it. We have the three objectives we need to work uh, with, and we can do them in any order. So, um, let's go up and see what's up here. Oh. I have a new contact on my screen. A sports car. You see, the thing is, this is an enemy vehicle. It's a sports car. It's probably not going to cause any potential threat. What's his uh, payload? He's got nothing. But because it's considered to be a hostile vehicle for some bizarre reason, it contributes as a kill. And since kills are what ranks our mech warriors up, and we want them to get higher ranks, well, anything that's remotely hostile and is a target will be blown up. But let's uh, let's not waste ammunition on this one. That was the PPC, by the way. We try to run, coward. Okay. Let's get them to chase him. Oh, he will have to follow the road, so he's dead. Hunter here. Have a new contact on my screen. Yes, sir. Beach here. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Oh well. It wasn't very nice, but uh, a kill is a kill. This is Link. I have a new sensor trace. There's an armored car. What's Hunter that got? Here. Have a new contact on my screen. A laser. Oh, new contact. Consider it done. Whatever will we do? Come on, guys. Yes, sir. Link here. I have a new sensor trace. Got one. And there's the driver of the car, and we can. Uh, Oh well, it's not very nice, but whatever. He blows up, so let's just pretend it's a robot. Uh, you will definitely find that you're... I have a new sensor I have a new contact on my screen. Good on you guys. Uh, you will probably find that uh, green and regular mech warriors can miss quite a bit. This is just to show off. Um, the forest. No problem, sir. Heads up, I've got a new contact. It will catch fire, and that fire can spread. There's a backspace. Yep, backspace will do it. As you can see, that fire can spread, so you can actually um, get rid of forests. And that's why I was mentioning earlier the ammunition conservative mode, where you don't necessarily want to blow uh, expensive ammunition, which of course is limited in order to clear something like a forest. Sometimes just a single voice can spread like absolute crazy. So let's um, get some uh, progression in this. Link here. My sensors have a new contact. They do indeed. There are two vehicles over have a here. New contact on my screen. Beach here. Uh oh. New contact. No problem, sir. Enemy vehicle destroyed. No problem, sir. Come on, boom. Hunter here. Enemy vehicle destroyed. There's the third vehicle here. Sensor trace. 
Just leave him here though, so laser turret there. Blow him up now. One less enemy crawler. Um, <coughs> and that is a fuel truck, by the way. And uh, in quite a significant radius, it will go absolutely bang. Um, I think anyone who's been playing this game has tried being very close to that fuel truck when they blew it up and lost perhaps even all three mechs. Anything that says fuel something, treat it with respect, it will blow up quite um, extensively. For some bizarre reason, this natural no gas problem, tower. Man, I can't see the smoke. This is Hunter. So much for that. Won't do too much, but anything with fuel. No problem, sir. Mission objective. This is the beast. Target vaporized. That was objective one. But there's um, sometimes resources to be had on different missions, and I will not be looking for all of them. But uh, those I know where are, I will go and hunt for some extra salvage. If we don't use what we salvage, we can always uh, sell it. We need to get over here. My sensors have a new contact. Have a new contact on my screen. So there will be two vehicles up here. Come on. Let's see what they have. Two pulse lasers. Clan pulse lasers. Come on, guys. Who wants some of this? Hunter here. I'm taking fire. No problem, sir. One less enemy crawler. And one thing you will find is that um, the enemies will play a certain advantage. If they only have a very, very powerful short range weapons, they will charge no problem, you. Sir. Enemy components Hunter captured. Supporting building captured. So, we got some salvage. What did we get? We get, got two lasers. Better than nothing. Regardless, um, and this is one reason why I love the PPC as much because it can keep some of the more powerful weapon systems at an arm's length. And uh, these kind of games have always annoyed me in one aspect, and that is um, not just Mech Warrior or Battletech or whatever. Um, but a lot of role-playing games as well. The enemies you face, they are set up to fight you. Link here. I have a new sensor trait. It, 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 it's not... They are using weapons. Hunter here. I have a new contact on my screen. And, and setups that doesn't indicate that they are there to live another day. They are there to be a huge threat to you and nothing else. And sometimes... Especially when it happens in role-playing games that you come up against 10 warriors with all 200 weapons plus 27. It feels a bit... Uh, most warriors would actually probably go around with a sword and shield, not necessarily 200 weapons, because while you do more damage, if you get stuck in a fight, you aren't, haven't got much in the way of defense. And especially in Make War 2, it will like throwing out mechs with dual auto cannon setups and things like that just, just meant to maul you if they were fighting anything equipped with PPCs and that anything was able to stand at long range they would never stand a chance and I suppose it has to be challenging whatever get to fight our first mech around here My sensors have a new contact. Uh -oh, new contact. Um, terrain matters. As you can see, we gain some high ground, and we now have no problem, sir. a much larger One less enemy crawler. view range. I have a new sensor trait. You do indeed, and I know what it is. I'm detecting a new sensor target. That red circle means that it's either a mech or a sensor tower thing. In this case, it happens to be a mech, but I don't want to fight. Even though it's just a commando, I don't want to fight them in um, cover of other weapon systems. So uh, let's see if we can get rid of that laser turret. You actually hit? 
Good man. Come on. One critique of a level against this game, remember it's old, so you have to cut it some slack, but sometimes your mech warriors, when you give them an attack order, will do some very odd move uh, maneuvering that doesn't match. They always seem to want to close on their targets, even though they have a long range weapon advantage. So you sometimes you have to nurse mate them a bit, which can be a bit annoying. Anyway. Uh -oh. New contact. He's not moving yet. No problem, sir. He's still not moving. No, there he comes. So. No problem, sir. Come on. See if I can get links behind him to attack his weak armor. Or you can have two commandos no behind them, that's perfectly fine, I don't care. Come on. No problem, sir. It helps if you can hit, come on. I am the hunter. No problem, sir. Did we get any salvage from him? Nope, he blew up. Oh, not a shame. Um, it also showed a bit of a tendency this game has about uh, hitting one of your mech warriors no problem, sir. and focusing him down and ignoring other um, mechs. Yes, sir. Which can be a benefit, so you can get other mates behind them, uh, or behind them, I would say, but uh, you also at risk of having... Have if you have a long missions... Mission uh, that one of your mixes, mix will absolutely get uh, ground down over time. So, anyway, these two done, we can now go and worry about the third one. But that is where the Omni Mech we were warned about is located. So, wait, a new contact. What have we got? Hey, car. No problem, sir. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Nice shot, man. Let's go down here and see if there's anything down here. Just nosy. Probably not. In light mix, it's not so painful to check for extras. As long as it's not a minefield, you find. Let's go up here and see if that reveals anything. Probably not. Nah. And then it turns out to be a huge resource cache somewhere. There isn't. I've, uh, in a pre recording attempt, I was scouring through this map to make sure I didn't miss out on anything. There will be uh, later missions where I will probably miss out on certain resources, but uh, the important part is the completion of the missions. Just to show what happens with a fuel tank. Changing range. This is Link. Yeah. Target destroyed. Any mech within that blast radius will take absolutely horrific damage. So. They are set up in tactical locations on certain missions to give you a chance to uh, even out the odds when you are outnumbered, which you almost always will be. But, uh. Oh well. Just a power plant. I know I'm taking a bit longer on this mission, but just, uh. Beach here. Uh oh. New contact. I have a new contact on my screen. Going over some details. So, let's see if we can provoke that Allah to come out and say hi. Um, could I get links away? Come on. He's got the heaviest weapon, so... Wanna come and say hi? No, that's a vehicle. You know what? We'll take I'm that right out. Here. Come on. Oops. F1. No problem, sir. Come on, please. Links here. One less enemy crawler. Hmm, you know what, let's just get that laser turret out of the way. Changing range.
¿No? Sometimes it's not very good at engaging. You do indeed. Come on. I have a new contact on my screen. This is Link. My sensors have a new contact. I want him to follow us. No problem, sir. Thank you. Come on. Here. I'm getting shot at. Because of the range advantage he's got, he will keep walking backwards trying to use his range. So, our task is to try and box him in, prevent him from doing so. Come on. They're coming after me. You don't say. Come on, Lynx. Um, come on, please. Wait here. I'm under attack. You're not saying, are you? Come on. Would be nice getting that mech without blowing up his wings, but uh, you can shoot back, please. Yes, sir. Getting an early Omni mech could be nice. Not likely, I can tell. <laughs> it's got no green bars, got no weapons left. Poor thing. We got the Olio. Yeah, well, it will probably cost a fortune to repair it when we can't equip it with clan weaponry because it's only been blown to smithereens, but I will take an Omnimech early on in the game. We need to... yeah, as these no problem, sir. still count as kills, I will blow them up even though it seems a bit meh. This is Link. One left enemy crawler. No problem, sir. Got one. Yes, sir. Got one. No problem, sir. One left enemy crawler. No problem, sir. It may seem a bit wasteful to do this, but enemy vehicle destroyed. Their ranks up are based on kills, so. Who wants some of this? Mission Worth doing. Complete. Mission successful. Commendation for low drop weight. So as you can see, an overview, enemy units destroyed of those mechs. How many pilots were killed in the process? I don't know why that's signified, never mind. Uh, what we lost and how many mechs we lost. You prefer to want to see zeros there, of course, then we get uh, the rewards for the different objectives and 1000 resource points for 5 tons on the maximum. I think it's 1000 points per 5 tons. I can't remember specifically. Whatever salvage we got, and as you can see, there's a yellow marker on the different skills signifying that they've come a bit better at what they're doing and how many kills they got. And for once, Lynx wasn't a uh, bloody kill stealer. I can't remember what I mentioned these dots over the icons. I'm fairly sure I didn't. These are the pilot's health. The pilots can die, and I will not reload a mission or replay a mission in case there's certain bonuses I don't get. But um, if one of my main pilots die, I will most likely reload the mission or replay the mission. Anyway, in each video I will keep the, the housekeeping of the missions in the current video, so repairs and selling and things like that. So. I will not go over the briefing now because that is uh, only relevant for the next mission. But as you can see we're going to make way and Whatever damage they've taken, as you can see, they focused mainly on links. So it hasn't taken an awful lot of damage, so we actually got away scot free on this one. 16,000? Hmm. Uh, repair all includes uh, restocking ammunition, by the way, so. There's only 40 resource points, so it's only been ammo. So, I uh, got away with that quite 
decent to be honest. The Ola. Everything is gone. The sensors, the auto, auto cannon, extended range lasers, and clan streak missile packs. Um, if you try to refit, you are given the offer to remove those, so let's just do that. Let's see how much it costs. Probably not going to be cheap, this. 5,000 resource points. Yeah, well, um, it's probably worth having it. This is a weapon variation. I'm not f keen on it, but uh, for the moment, I think I'm just going to park it up. I should probably deploy it, to be honest. Mm, I could replace one of my commandos, but have I got enough weaponry to justify it? Not really, no. Let's go in and see if we can buy anything of use. Any mech warriors? We could get Siren. Hmm. Uh, we've got of components, so we would need something with a bit of bite. I don't like the light auto cannons. Hmm. Long range missile packs. The problem is they have very limited ammunition. We got one sensor basic. Even though it's clunk max, we can easily put uh, inner sphere equipment on it. So. Mm, mm, low value of 4. Annoying. Is there any indication I've actually never checked that? Of its load value, I'm fairly sure there's no, it just says payload. Yeah. Would be nice that you could see an actual payload value. So you could see how much you needed to buy in order to make it combat effective. Probably shouldn't be spending too many resources. Well, I'm going to get rid of that light also. Wow, only 705. Whatever. Um. To be honest, I think I will leave it as it is for n now. It was a lot of absolutely nothing for nothing. Hmm. Regardless, I will just park it up here for the moment and then uh, I will go to the main menu and save and then we'll be back in the next part. Uh, I know this part was probably a bit longer than it needed to be but uh, I just want to get certain bases covered first and uh, please notice that this is a, a live recording and not something I normally don't like doing because of uh, my bird being active during the day, I can only record during the night time. Secondly, by recording game volume and speech separately, I can increase or decrease the volume of either. And I've tried using Audacity to record speech and other um, sources to um, record in-game sounds, but I find that Audacity desyncs a bit. It's about 5 seconds over 20 minutes, but um, it's not something I've been able to find a way around so um, in this case I'm recording the game volume at very low volume because my voice I for some reason speak very low so um, um, yeah it's just more appropriate for certain games to have an in the moment response instead of uh, trying to emulate or simulate some sort of oh, surprise kind of thing when I damn well know what's going on um, already so I hope it works out and yeah well we'll see how it goes but anyway as for now thanks for watching take care and see you in the next part bye bye